Okay. So without further ado, um, I will welcome and introduce Joe uh, Bruner and Joe Comfort with the Kansas Department of Commerce. And their topic today is how Kansas Works can help small business get qualified employees. Joe and Joe, thank you for, for, for joining us from beautiful downtown Manhattan, Kansas. Thanks for having us. Absolutely, thank you for having us, Nancy. I'm gonna introduce myself first and then Joe's gonna introduce himself. Um, I'm Joe Bruner. I work for the Kansas Department of Commerce and I am a supervisor for the Junction City and Manhattan Workforce Centers. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joe Comfort and I am the Assistant State Manager for Veterans Employment Services. And I also wear another hat as a Kansas Registered Apprenticeship Coordinator. So we're going to talk today about um, the wide array of services and resources we have through our workforce centers and online um, for employers. I um, don't know how many of you are aware of our services, um, so some of this may be repetitive, but it's always good to hear it again. Um, just to let you know, there are, I believe, 23 workforce centers across the state and two of them, um, two additional ones are available by appointment. I think that's in Colby and Goodland. So I wasn't sure if our audience is across the state. Are they? Yes, okay. Yeah. So um, we are, uh, the Manhattan and Junction City Workforce Centers are two of four workforce centers in our area, our area is all of Northeast Kansas. It has 17 counties. And we, um, all of the um, workforce centers across the state pretty much have the same um, services to provide to employers. Some, um, if, a, if a veteran employment representative isn't available, then the workforce center staff person can also provide services to veterans. But let me get started on um, our employer services. We primarily help employers with recruitment and um, we also help with training and retention. So to start off with, um, we invite employers to create accounts on kansasworks.com, which is our online job posting system and they can create their own accounts and if they do that then they can do resume searches if they choose to get our assistance a staff person's assistance to create that account then we will do the resume searches for them and send them the re the resumes or referrals as we call it um so an employer when they create an account um, and they create a job order on that account it's just like creating a job order on Indeed or anything like that, except for Kansas Works has a special function in matching the job order um, words, the skills and abilities that you're looking for to the resumes that are put on Kansas Works. And right now we probably have about 40,000 jobs open on Kansas Works mm -hmm. and probably Sadly, only eight or 9,000 um, resumes. So as we all know, um, the labor pool is not big. Everyone is working. Um, we're trying to find more people to come to the state of Kansas. I just heard that Topeka is um, doing a new um, program where they're offering $15,000 to someone to apply to see if they would be accepted to transfer into Topeka, they've gotten, I think they said, a couple hundred, maybe more than that, applications. Um, they also have to not only be willing to come to Topeka, but they have to look, they have to become employed in Topeka. So I think statewide, uh, many employers are just very desperately looking for qualified people. And so we have some programs to help with that. KansasWorks.com is one of those. Um, people can can see the jobs from anywhere they're looking. They could be in, they could be um, a veteran, uh, not a veteran, but a soldier in Germany that's looking to um, come to Kansas, and they can go on KansasWorks.com and see what jobs they are there are. 
So another thing that we do is to provide applicant screening and referrals. And what that means is that staff of the Workforce Center will post the job for the employer. They will do the resume search. They will um, uh, have applicants come into the Workforce Center, complete applications. We will send you um, those applicants. Um, even if we could even do what I call the Cadillac of services. We could um, put them into different quality piles. And we could say this person in pile A seems to be the most qualified for your job, but we will give you all of the resumes. Um, so we can do that for you. Skills assessments and testing, we can um, provide any kind of proficiency tests. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about work keys testing a little bit further on. We can provide that as well. Um, anyone who's looking for a job can take the work keys assessments in the workforce centers and um, try to get uh, a national career readiness certificate. And then um, we can also host or coordinate career fairs. Um, we have these career fairs in our workforce centers. We've been very successful recently. Um, I don't know where all the people came from, but in Junction City uh, Foot Locker distribution facility had, oh, almost three, week, three a week and brought in over 200 people, which I don't know where they came from, but um, it was wonderful. Uh, Smithfield brought, had a one day hiring event and they had 135 people come into the Junction City Workforce Center which surprised us. Um, normally we don't have that many people coming in, but these things look like they're uh, fairly successful. And then uh, we also have statewide job fairs and other big job fairs, different parts of the state, different uh, workforce centers can put on um, their own regional hiring events. They can bring in multiple employers um, here in this area. We always have a, um, what we call the Patriots Day Career Fair in Junction City. Mm -hmm. We have about 40 employers come to that. We have um, hopefully 200 people, um, 200 applicants come. And we are in an area where there's a lot of transitioning service members. So we are very happy to have them come to these events. Um, April 2nd will be the next statewide career fairs. They, there will probably be, um, 10 or 12 of them across the state of Kansas. So keep an eye out on Kansas Works for when those are gonna be and where they're gonna be. Ours in our area is gonna be in Manhattan, Topeka and Lawrence. So each town will have its own uh, large statewide career fair on that day. Let's see, um, we also provide in our, in our facilities across the state places for you to come in an interview besides a hiring event. You can come in and um, have interviews. You can also use this equipment that we're on today to have Skype interviews. We can set those up for you as well. And then um, I guess we provide um, a lot of social media when we have these events. So we have um, across the state, all the workforce centers have a website so the Junction City Workforce Center website is a place to see um, different events that are coming up. We provide a lot of training programs for our job applicants. So that's on our uh, Facebook page, on our, on our Workforce Center websites. We try really hard to push um, our hot jobs list in, air, in our Northeast part of Kansas. So every two weeks, um, Junction City Manhattan puts out a hot jobs list. It goes to um, the, goes on post and goes to various other agencies so they can see. It's really a teaser to try to get them to go on kansasworks.com and see the great jobs that we have. There's also one um, that we do for Topeka Lawrence. So um, every week there's a hot jobs list coming out. We also have a calendar of our events, whether it's a hiring event or a workshop. Um, the way I look at it is we, um, and, and not everyone has the same opinion, but I look at employers as our primary customer and our 
um, job seekers after they're prepared, after they're job ready, as our product. So we do a lot for the job seekers in the workforce centers to get them ready to apply for your jobs, to retain those jobs, and to have the skills. Um, so I think that covers that slide. Um, I do want to talk a little bit, and I'm not sure if it's on here, but in the workforce centers, we partner with um, uh, different one-stop operators. So here in the northeast part of Kansas, we partner with Heartland Works, which is considered what we call the one-stop operator. They are responsible for providing training to those job applicants that don't have the skills that you need that person to have to come and work for you. So it's everything from classroom training for um, nursing. Um, we do a lot of CDL truck drivers. Uh, it's based upon the in-demand occupations for our region. So Northeast, Can all the regions, and there are five of them, um, and the reason they are, there are five of them is because they have different um, in-demand occupations. So in Northeast Kansas, we have a huge need for um, everyone in the healthcare field, CDL drivers, which is also nationwide. Now, um, the area around Wichita will have more need for aeronautical, um, airplane industry, aviation, aviation um, those types of jobs. So, so they probably provide, they do provide training for people to get those jobs. And um, some of the tools and um, that we have to help employers um, to bring on job seekers that may, that may be groups or targeted pools of, of applicants that you might not normally consider might be um, where you might want to use the Work Opportunity Tax Credit. Are you really talking about that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So the Work Opportunity Tax Credit is a federal program. It's in every state. And what it does is provide incentive to employers to hire people they wouldn't normally employ. Like there may be um, people on cash assistance. There may be people who have been in prison um, and are now out. There may be um, veterans with disabilities. Um, definitely targets low income. Um, just, just there's eight or nine different categories and you can get up to, an employer I believe can get up to somewhere around $9,600 a year per employee um, if they qualify under the work opportunity tax credit. So it's a tax credit to the employer to incentivize you to hire people you may not normally take a chance on. And then um, we also have the federal bonding program, which obviously is a federal program. Um, it's in every state. And what we do with that is encourage employers, again, who might not hire someone who has had a background situation where they might have uh, lost their job because they, they stole something. So this bond, um, which the employer can request of the workforce center can ensure the employer for up to $5,000 for the first six months for free for that employee to make sure that in case they do something bad, um, the insurance will cover your cost on that. Is that pretty good? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to let Joe definitely talk about registered apprenticeship. He is the subject matter expert on that. Thank you, Joe, and good morning, everybody. Registered apprenticeship, <clears throat> or should I say Kansas registered apprenticeship, is what people traditionally think of when they think of apprenticeships, in that an individual has the ability to earn a paycheck while they learn skills towards building their careers. The two key components of registered apprenticeship would include the on-the-job learning or the hands-on portion, and the second would be the classroom or the related technical instruction, where individuals can learn the tasks of the trade and then go out there, go out in the field and apply them in real-world situations. 
registered apprenticeship carries benefits for both employers and apprentices. Employers, you are investing in your employees and showing them that you are willing to help create a career lattice for them to show them how they can progress as they go on to master these different tasks in a, in a given occupation. It also allows for clearly identified pay raises over given periods of time. And ideally, the registered apprenticeship program is employer driven, meaning that employers are the ones who set the guidelines for the program with our assistance. The heart of the registered apprenticeship program are the standards of apprenticeship, which we can assist you with developing, which clearly outline the on the job learning portion and the related technical instruction portion. Most people, when they think of apprenticeships, they think of skilled labor and trades, such as carpentry, HVAC repair, um, metal workers, electricians, and those are all apprenticeable occupations in Kansas. However, the field of occupations that are apprenticeable is quite vast. I want to say we actually have a few brewmaster and winemaking apprenticeships in Kansas. Uh, we have apprenticeships in the health healthcare field. Uh, there's just so much more than your standard uh, skilled labor and trades work. So that is something that we can assist you with. And depending upon where your business is located, you may qualify for reimbursement for providing some of the related technical instruction for each of the apprentices you bring on. Work ready testing, as Joe alluded to earlier, the work keys assessments. Work ready testing is a, it's a series of tests in which we provide the testing for individuals applying for jobs that gauge their abilities in three critical areas, reading information, basic, basic mathematics, and reading comprehension. Graphic literacy. Graphic literacy, excuse me. With these qualifications under their belts, these individuals applying for jobs that have certain requirements can show the employer that they no doubt have those basic skills that they are looking for. And Another key thing that we like to utilize is the Kansas Works mobile unit, which is essentially a computer lab on wheels. We use this, this vehicle at different community outreach programs, community hiring events. It is a great tool to get out there in some of these areas, especially in Western Kansas, where our workforce centers are a little bit fewer and far in between to get out there and assist folks in helping them become job ready. And again, this isn't a typo. I just wanted to mention registered apprenticeship again because it is something near and dear to my heart. If you are interested in learning more about it, I would be more than happy to come visit with you to talk to you about the registered apprenticeship program. And I think that's it for that slide. Well let me just say the rapid response, which I missed, I'm sorry, is a program where if an employer is going to have to lay employees off, the workforce centers have staff that will come in and talk to um, those employees, um, especially because if they lose their job due to no fault of their own, then we have training programs to retrain them. We have the Trade Adjustment Act to retrain them. Um, again, so a lot of that is to try to get them back on track after they've um, perhaps lost their job. We also bring in the Department of Labor who does unemployment and they help with that as well. Um, and just real quick, the other thing about the assessment and skill testing, we do free um, skill testing in the workforce centers for typing, Microsoft Office products, things like that. Just wanted to mention that. Okay. Done with that slide. Okay. Um, just to clear up one thing, 
all of the services that are offered to employers and our workforce centers have zero cost association, meaning that if you choose to post your positions to Kansas Works, you want assistance in uh, getting good referrals for available positions, there's no cost associated to employers or our customers who come through our doors. Um, I suppose you could say that our services are 100% free to you. Now moving on to advocacy, advocacy for hiring veterans. The Junction City and Manhattan Workforce Centers are situated on either side of Fort Riley, Kansas. And veterans and transitioning service members are a population very near and dear to my heart. I spent 20 years on active duty in, in Army service and retired from Fort Riley in 2010. And I recall what it was like trying to get my first job after getting out of the military. It was a pretty harrowing experience. It was difficult. The only thing I had known in my entire adult life up to that point was the military. And this is where we have dedicated staff who can assist these veterans and transitioning service members into gaining their next career and empowering them with the knowledge, skills, and abilities to move forward with getting that dream job upon separating from the service. Military members have a unique skill set that they can bring to the table for employers. As some of you may know, the military has a pretty unique jargon and set of acronyms. And a lot of times employers just do not know what those acronyms are or what that technical speak is. And that is where our staff come in to assist those transitioning service members and veterans into translating their knowledge, skills, and abilities into language that employers can more easily understand. This staff that I speak of consists of two different categories, DevOps, or Disabled Veteran Outreach Program Specialists, and LEAVERS, Local Veterans Employment Representatives. The DevOps are the staff who work one-on-one -on -one with that veteran or transitioning service member in pursuit of their next career. They are the ones who assist veterans and TSMs with developing those resumes, developing good interviewing skills, assisting them with job searching. And for those individuals who are going to be leaving the state of Kansas, we can conduct warm handoffs with our counterparts all across the nation to make sure that that individual receives seamless service. Now your leavers or local veterans employment representatives, they work with veterans as well, but they are the individuals who go out and engage with local businesses to find out what their hiring needs are, what knowledge, skills, and abilities they are requiring for those positions, and bringing that information back to the DevOps to collaborate and help make referrals for the best qualified individuals to those positions. So our leavers are also part of our business services team, which are on call to assist employers with all of their hiring needs. We also collaborate with several partner services, the Department of Veterans Affairs, Fort Riley, Fort Leavenworth, McConnell, McConnell Air Force Base, to provide a network of services across the state and across the nation to help these folks and get them where they need to be when, it's, when it pertains to employment. One of the key services that we provide for our veterans are, is case management. That is where the DevOps will work extensively one-on-one -on -one with that individual on all aspects of gaining employment and in the hopes of helping them overcome significant barriers to employment. Some of these significant barriers to employment are things that may be mislabeled by society. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Individuals with PTS or PTSD are unsuitable workers. They're violent, they're angry. Well, that's just not the case, folks. Because of their military service, our young men and women in uniform have faced some pretty difficult things. 
and we are there to help them get the help they need in order to overcome these barriers and help make themselves 100% employable. And I think that's it for that slide. Okay. We can go on. We're done. Um, <clears throat> that is all the info we have. Our contact information is right here on the screen. And I think that we're going to go ahead and open the floor for any questions that anybody may have. Fantastic. Thank you both, um, Joes. <laughs> Open up your own microphone if you have a question about anything you've heard. Is this microphone? Yes. What is your working relationship with the technical colleges across the state? Did you hear that? Yeah, I, I both of us can probably answer this. We work hand in hand with them. Um, a lot of their courses are courses that are um, we owe a I didn't mention that Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act is the federal program that finances all of us, um, pays for us. Um, so the training that registered apprenticeship might provide or the training that our partner Heartland Works might provide is usually at a technical college. So um, we work very closely with them. They also have memorandum of understandings with us. Um, there are certain things that we are mandated to provide. They actually, the technical colleges um, and adult education in the state are part of the act that we're all covered under. It's a pretty broad umbrella, but um, we didn't get into a lot of that um, because a lot of that is about um, tra uh, training or getting the job applicant ready. So um, that's where we send them to school if they need the technical skills so they can get the jobs that we have in demand. Speaking from the registered apprenticeship perspective, we do work with several community and technical colleges across the state. Uh, we have worked with them to get their programs registered with us. <clears throat> in conjunction with some of their local employers to help provide a pipeline to that employer. Um, one school that I can give an example that has been a huge partner with us is Peasley Tech up in Lawrence. They have registered several of their programs and are helping fill key needs in that area by providing that related technical instruction to those folks as the employers seek to hire these individuals that are gaining these skills and knowledge. So yes, we, we do partner with them quite frequently. Yep. Any other questions? So what would the process be if a local um, extension office wanted to utilize your Microsoft and clerical skills, they would just ask that applicant to go into a workforce office and receive the certification? Is it kind of a certification type of thing? Are you talking about the extension office as an employer? Yes. Okay. So any employer that wants to um, get these services, we would probably start by explaining that we need an account for them on kansasworks.com, which we can help them create or, or they can create. And then they tell us, you can tell us what you're looking for, what skills you need to have in that job. And if that means that they need to know how to use Microsoft Word, then we can add that into the job order and say they can come into the workforce center and they can take, um, we have three different versions of it. They, they can take one of those versions and then we provide the employer with the test results. Very good. So yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. So one of the things, uh, I'm curious, gonna... not only from you, but from the people on this call, um, at, a, at a national meeting, the Community Vitality Specialist for K-State Research and Extension heard about um, the University of Utah, which you know has 
even more um, remote working areas than Kansas does. And they are doing a certification for remote work so that people would go through their program and be certified that they have the skills um, necessary to do remote work. And as we're talking, I'm wondering how th that would vary. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that that might already exist in, in Kansas. Well, we do have some companies that um, provide opportunities for people to do remote work. Um, I think they, those companies have their own um, test assessments that they use to see if that person is, is ready to do that. Not just having the hard, you know, the um, internet access and those kinds of things, but also to have the customer service skills. Mm -hmm. um, I think when they start finding it difficult to find people that pass those assessments, then perhaps they will be asking for training, which um, I'm sure the technical colleges would love to be able to put together that curriculum and provide that training. But so far, um, I just had a, a client the other day from vocational rehabilitation who is disabled and she had an assessment done with a company right here in the workforce center using our Skype equipment. And she just needed to have that assessment and interview, which she did. And then um, they were gonna, I don't know the result, but I hope she passed. Um, but she was going to be able to, to work from home for some kind of call center. So that was really great. Yeah, great. Joe, this is uh, Dave Dillard uh, at Hutchinson. Uh, just a comment, uh, I guess another resource, uh, um, the SBA and then uh, SCORE, especially Wichita SCORE, is working with a program called Boots to Business. Um, and it's uh, really, a, uh, they've uh, been active at McConnell and Fort Riley as well. Good information. Think, yeah, that is good information. We um, have a full-time staff person on post at Fort Riley. And one, they, at Fort Riley, they're doing um, career skills programs, and we're very involved with those programs. So one, for example, is through the Manufacturing Institute, and they um, conduct cl uh, five classes during the year. I don't think they've started any place else in Kansas, but um, they do have one in Texas. And they... So they are trying to get people interested in manufacturing. And so the transitioning service member, while they're still in, can take this 10 week class and get that training. And then they are finding jobs in Kansas for these folks, which is fantastic. 50% um, of the classes are staying in Kansas. So they might go to work in um, Wichita or they might go to Goodyear in Topeka we have a company called Camso in Junction that might hire them. Um, while they're taking this class, they tour across the state to see these different folks. And then I think also on post at all the military, well, at least I know the Army installations, um, the Small Business Administration helps with entrepreneurship classes. So um, they, they do that on post at Fort Riley. And the other thing that we haven't talked about is um, the uh, soldiers at Fort Riley, while they're in service, can do an internship anywhere that is approved by the um, people at the Soldier for Life program at Fort Riley. And so we have people from Fort Riley going across the state getting internship experience and the employer does not have, cannot pay them because they're still being paid by um, the army. So we had one, for example, that worked for a company in Junction City for four months in an internship in HR and then got hired at K-State after the internship was over. Mm -hmm. So these, these are incredibly wonderful connections and um, Joe is very involved in it and our staff person Rodney on post at Fort Riley is very involved. I, and I'm just going to mention this other thing. Um, four schools in um, this area, Kansas State University, 
Cloud County, Manhattan Area Technical College, and the Christian College all came together to do uh, short-term internship opportunities for their students. These are paid by the employer. Um, and I think they actually used a company to, to kind of organize this whole thing. If you want more information, um, you can email me and I can um, tell you how, who you need to talk to if, if you have um, employers interested in having your technical colleges or universities um, get involved in this uh, short-term internships. So, very good. good. Well, thank you. Okay. Nozella's got a question. Hi, yes, this is Nozella and I'm in the Wyandotte County area, Kansas City area here and we're also working at trying to retain some of our residents here for jobs. Are you doing anything in this area um, or is it mostly is it mostly in the Lawrence area close to us? You said Kansas City? Yes, ma'am. Okay. In Kansas City, we have, um, on, the, on the Kansas side, we have, what do we have? We have there are three workforce centers up there. There's uh, one in Wyandotte County, one in Johnson County, and there is one uh, in Leavenworth. Um, I want to say the one in Wyandotte is on Blue Jacket. Blue Jacket Drive. Oh, okay. But yes, we okay, have right full-time staff in all three of those workforce centers. And if you were to go on KansasWorks.com, you could see all the locations and contact information for those workforce centers. And they do in Kansas City the same things that we do here in our area. Awesome. And Thank you. They may even have more programs. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Yes. Okay, well, th thank you so much for all that good information. And um, if there's anything you've forgotten, um, you you mentioned uh, work opportunities, tax credits, and that's going to be our next um, program next month. So we'll get another opportunity to understand great. that wonderful asset. Uh, but in the meantime, though, let's, I want to open it up for sharing from um, all the partners on the call about the, the um, events that you have coming up that you'd like us to be aware of and promote with our audiences. Um, are you okay with me going? No. Okay. Nadine Siegel, are you? Um, next yes, year? I'm still on. Good. Well, we were wondering about sharing about your internship opportunities. Yeah, we're just looking for the unmute button there. Okay. Um, I do work with uh, a group of interns across Northwest Kansas. It's called the Dane G. Hansen Community Internship Program, where we will be looking to hire um, roughly 20 students this summer. They're in all different types of areas. Um, applications are being taken now. Things are being posted on the college websites at this point in time. It's pretty difficult to rattle off the list of the types of interns that we'll be looking for, but it could be anywhere from somebody who might have an architecture background, a music background, a graphic design. There's lots of them out there where they're looking for people to come in and help them with marketing and promotional type packages uh, for their communities across Northwest Kansas. Um, they are incredible internships paid at the rate of $20 an hour. They'll work for 400 hours throughout the summertime. We want them to be uh, about a junior in college so that it is more of a pre-professional work experience for them. Um, we ask the community to identify a project area that they want the intern to work on and then they just kind of leave them to work on their own and just give them guidance as they need the guidance to complete the project. And all of those applications would come in to me um, to my email address at nsigl at ksu.edu and the application deadline is January the 31st. And Nadine, if you have um, a a single sheet or something that I could send out with this um, email. I'd be glad to do that. They sure, have, I do have that. Uh -huh. The amazing thing too is that they offer, uh, besides $20 an hour housing, 
yeah, yeah, housing is provided for the intern throughout the summertime. Who else wants to share? Thank you, Nadine. Uh-huh. This is Dave Ducart uh, at Hutchinson again. Uh, hey, something that is coming up on uh, April 23rd is our uh, 2020 uh, Women's uh, Leadership Conference. This year's uh, uh, theme is uh, Healthy Mind, Healthy Body, Healthy Business. Uh, going to be at uh, Cottonwood uh, Course or Cottonwood Court uh, at the. Uh, uh, Are you there, Dave? Yes. Did you oh. get it? No. Yeah, it'd be at the Cottonwood Course. Yeah, it's going to be at uh, Cottonwood Courts at the uh, Kansas State Fairgrounds. Uh, it's uh, going to run from uh, nine in the morning till uh, three in the afternoon. Uh, we have uh, three keynote speakers plus a panel of uh, uh, entrepreneurs or CEOs in the uh, the area. Fantastic. And if you'd like to send me a flyer, I'd be glad to put that out to uh, colleagues as well. Thanks. Thank you, Nancy. Anybody else? So for the benefit of our non-K-State research and extension people, I will just tell you that um, one of my community vitality projects is to teach grant writing workshops and uh, we'll be next week in um, Junction City. I think there's five or six of them already set up. They're basically locally um, generated. If the, if the local community invites us, then we come and, and teach um, and they're, they've been well received and, and the uh, folks are showing good returns on their grant writing efforts with more than um, $6.7 million so far reported of those who have answered our surveys. Alrighty. Well, I'm not seeing any more hands raised. So I will remind you again that our next call is the first Friday of February. I think that's February the uh, Seventh, and our caller, our speaker is Ashla Stowe, the program manager from the Kansas Department of Commerce on the Work Opportunities Tax Credits. So, hey Nancy. Yes, Wayne. Hey, this is Wayne with the SBA. Um, I just thought I would take an opportunity uh, to let the group know that we're having the next Boots to Business class at Fort Riley. That's going to be January fifteenth and sixteenth. Uh, one of the things that might be of interest to uh, some of the, uh, you know, some of the uh, individuals on the call here, uh, as an example, with the workforce group. So the Boots to Business curriculum is a two-day curriculum, and in the final two hours of the second day, we bring in local resources uh, to introduce, you know, to the service members. Uh, and, and so we'd certainly be open if there were partners that would be interested and if it makes sense, you know, to speak with a group of about nearly 40 or so service members each time we do this class, um, we'd certainly, you know, be open to getting you some time on the agenda to come in and, and at least share with the group how they might further connect with you and utilize your resources if they're interested in staying in Kansas. So that's one of the things we do that not only at Fort Riley, uh, this happens at Fort Leavenworth as well as um, McConnell Air Force Base. Uh, so would encourage anyone, if you just reach out to me, uh, Nancy's got my contact info and I'm sure um, I'm on the distribution you know, that goes out with this, but Boost to Business is, is uh, one thing. And we do these quarterly at, again, at each, each of the military uh, installations. So. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Wayne. All right. If there's no other sharing, then I will um, end the call with a thought for the day from James Sherman. The author says, although no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start now and make a brand new ending. So have a happy new year and we'll see you in February. Thanks all. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you. Happy New Year.